Hello and welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire. This video is different than most that I do in that it's kind of like a crafty public service announcement. A lot of people have been asking why I use craft foam instead of foam tape on a lot of my handmade cards to add dimension. So I thought I would do a video to explain it. The engineer in me even wanted to do a bit of research to kind of demonstrate this. So what I did is I mailed myself two cards. The mail lady thought I was a little nuts, but I did it. So these two cards are the same. The only difference is what was used for dimension. I have a note card with a white panel, a large white cardstock panel adhered to the front. On one of the cards, I used foam tape to adhere it. On the other, I used a large piece of craft foam. And then I send it through the mail and let it get crushed and beat up how it normally does going through the mail. And this is what I ended up with. The card on the left uses foam tape strips to add that white cardstock. So I just used several pieces of foam tape strips. This is the tape that I love. I love, love, love this roll. It's a large roll that lasts forever. You could use foam dots or foam squares for the same effect. I just find the foam tape is more cost effective and I still use it and I'll explain when. So that's what I used on the card on the left. The card on the right, same paper, same note card, but I used a piece of craft foam that is cut slightly smaller than the white panel and glued behind there. So this is fun foam, craft foam. Uh, I think it has two millimeter thickness to it, very inexpensive. Okay, so now let's take a closer look. The one with the foam tape strips in the back, you can see it got crushed in the mail pretty big time. You can see the creases, you can see where the foam tape is on the outside and there's a piece in the center that I used to. You can see all the marks on it. So I've been getting cards from friends who use this foam tape and unfortunately they get crushed in the mail. And I used to use foam tape all the time on large pieces like this white piece. And I realized when people got it, the cards were crushed because of the mailing process. So that's why I stopped using foam tape for large pieces like this. Now smaller things like a little flower I add to a card, I still use the foam tape. Now here is the piece that went through the card that went through the mail with the craft foam behind the white card stock. So it's one big piece of craft foam that I taped in there. And look at there are no creases, there's no signs of being crushed in the mail. It really held up quite nicely. So whenever I'm adding a big piece of cardstock to the front of my note card, I use craft foam behind it. You can see there's quite a big difference here when I tilt it up to the light uh, between how they ended up going through the mail. They have about the same thickness. You can see they have about the same dimension, but the one on the right held up much better, the one with the craft foam. So let me talk a little bit about which I use when. I still like foam tape because I can tear off tiny little pieces and cut thin strips. So I still use foam tape for small stamped images that I wanna pop up or small embellishments. Anything small, it seems to make it through the mail fine and not get damaged if you use foam tape. I like that large roll of 3M foam tape. It lasts you a long time and it's very strong and easy to tear. Now, if I wanna add large pieces of cardstock to my note cards, I use craft foam. These are the craft foam sheets that I get. I usually get white. I'll show some other options later. This is nine by 12 and about two millimeters thick and it die cuts and cuts beautifully, which I'll show you in a moment. Now, when I get all these sheets of craft foam, I go ahead and pre-cut mine. You don't need to do this, but I find it helpful. I pre-cut mine to slightly smaller than five and a quarter by four inches, because if I'm going to add a panel to the front of my card, it's likely five and a quarter by four inches because that's small, uh, slightly smaller than the note card that I usually make. And if I need a smaller piece, I just cut this down and save the extra. Now I wanted to show you how easy it is to cut this with your trimmer. I found that any trimmer pretty much cuts it. If it doesn't cut all the way through, you can just tear the rest. So you see here that this trimmer just kind of cuts through it and then I can tear it apart very easily. And my guillotine trimmer cuts it beautifully also. Now I do also like this color variety pack. I'll link to it below and on my blog. It's the first variety pack that I found with beautiful colors of this fun foam or the craft foam. So if you are looking for colors, you want to add some dimension with some color behind it, or you want to die cut this and use this to create embellishments, this color pack is really great. The craft foam in this pack are about six inches by nine inches. Okay, so a lot of people ask about how you adhere the craft foam between your note card and your card stock. So I wanted to show you a few different options. So the first thing that I usually do, the thing I normally do, is I use my stamp runner from Tombow or any kind of dry adhesive. I put that on my note card, that's what's pink there. Then I lay my craft foam onto that. So that was that white piece I just put on. Then on the back of the cardstock I wanna put on the front, I put adhesive and then I lay that on the craft foam. I find it easier to put the adhesive on the paper than on the craft foam and I just sandwich it between. Now I do like to, when my card is all complete, go and squirt a little bit of a super strong adhesive just in the corners. Now this is Ranger's Multi-Medium in the matte finish. 
and I have a special nozzle on it that makes it real easy to put into tight spaces and I'll link to all that below. Now I put something heavy over this and let it dry and that will stay nice and secure. The tape that I put down originally, the adhesive I put down originally, will hold. I just do this just to be sure. Now another option that's a little bit stronger is score tape. This is something that I've started to do lately and I think I like it. So I take the thin score tape or any score tape that you may have, any strong double-sided adhesive, and I put a piece around all of the sides and then just a piece down the middle. And I'm putting this actually on the craft foam itself. Then I flip it over and do the same to the other side. Now if you're wondering about the craft foam that you can get with adhesive on one side already, I'll talk about that at the end of this video. So now I can just remove those little strips and put the white cardstock on the front and this will hold nicely also. So I encourage you just to try whatever adhesive you may have. Chances are it'll hold the craft foam in there just fine. And this piece, this card will go through the mail with no problem. It may be, seem silly to put that craft foam in there just for a little bit of dimension, but it really makes a big difference in making the front of your card kind of pop up. Okay, I wanted to also show you how this craft foam die cuts. I have found that all the different craft foams that I have personally tried have die cut beautifully. This one's about two millimeters thick. I'm running it through with just a regular wafer thin die. This one happens to be from Hero Arts. It's intricate and I love it. And look how nicely it die cuts. Now the die cut machine will flatten it temporarily, but it will pop back up. And you can see that die cuts beautifully. This is great because you can add this foam die cut right onto your card or you can glue this behind a paper die cut to give it some dimension. Now, if you want to have some easy adhesive on the back of your foam before you die cut it, I recommend the Stick It product. This is a double-sided adhesive that is super, super thin. So I take some of the Stick It and I put it on the back of a piece of the craft foam, and then I just cut off the extra. So now it has adhesive on one side of it. Now I go ahead and run that through my die cut machine and it die cuts beautifully. And now there's adhesive on the back so I can just glue it right onto my card. You can even put stick it on both sides so that you can glue the foam die cut onto your card and then a paper die cut on top of that so that the paper has some dimension behind it. And again, it might seem to flatten, but it will pop back up after it's been out of the die cut machine after a few minutes. And see that cut die cuts beautifully. Now I can't promise that every die will cut through uh, craft foam. Now every die that I've ever tried has cut through with no problem, but some craft foams are a little bit different, some dies are a little bit different. So I encourage you to try it, but I've never had any problem. Now there's one little fun technique I wanted to share with you while we're here. This is just a craft foam die cut piece. So it's just die cut out of craft foam. If you heat this up with a heat gun, it will actually shrink. At least every craft foam that I have ever tried will actually shrink. I remember doing this as a kid, so I thought I would try it out again and sure enough, it still works. So if you want to kind of create your own embellishment, a super small die cut, you can cut it from craft foam, heat it with your heat gun and it will slowly start to kind of shrink and it hardens just a little bit. And this is a fun embellishment to add to your card also. So there you can see the little shrunken die cut. It still has a little bit of the dimension to it. And you can see how much smaller it is than the actual die itself. So you could create little embellishments of different sizes by shrinking the craft foam. And there you can see there's still a bit of dimension. Now there is craft foam available that has adhesive on the back. However, I have found that that doesn't always die cut as well. And I also found that the adhesive isn't always that great. But if you have some, give it a try. It may work out good for you too. So there you have it, my silly little crafty public service announcement and explanation of why I use craft foam behind large pieces of cardstock on my handmade cards. I just want to make sure they arrive nicely. The whole point of these handmade cards is to make somebody smile, and I put a lot of time into it, so I want to make sure that they end up in their hands in good shape. If you are interested in any of the products I talk about, they're linked below my YouTube description, or you can head over to my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com. As always, I appreciate you stopping by, and I'll see you soon.